very much. Uh, so I'd like to uh, convey special thanks to the, uh, to the organizers of this, this, uh, this workshop. This has been uh, a lot of fun. Uh, so as, was, as Dima mentioned earlier, this is, uh, it's been great uh, to have just uh, all of your friends around. It's a little bit if, if a sensation probably familiar to all of you. Your uh, parents go off for the weekend, uh, leave you with the entire house, and you just bring all your friends, and uh, nobody tells you what to do. And uh, okay, and um, so so it's been really a blast. Um, so uh, the the work that I'm going to uh, describe started with, uh, with a project that I did with uh, Nathaniel Lindner from uh, Technion and uh, uh, Adi Stern from Weizmann, and uh, some of the follow-ups I'll mention was were done with these people. Uh, so so. Uh, the motivation to this work goes back to Mairana uh, zero modes, uh, uh, which were mentioned several times in this, in this workshop. Uh, this is a Torre um, Mairana, an Italian uh, high energy physicist from the 30s, uh, who disappeared, uh, but uh, has been popping out uh, actually recently over la the last few years in a very surprising context in condensed matter physics. So these kind of nano devices. These are nanowires uh, connected to superconductors. This is an, uh, actually an object called the Majorana zero mode, uh, which bears some similarity to the particle that uh, Majorana predicted uh, is been, being discussed. Uh, I, I suppose, I wasn't here for the first part of the workshop, I suppose that uh, Majorana fermions were explained several times. Uh, I won't go into details. Uh, let me just review the properties of Majorana zero modes that are important for the purpose of this talk. Okay, so, so we have a, a, this is one of the setups out of several now that have been implemented to discover Majorana fermions. So um, this is a superconductor and this is a quantum wire, a semiconducting wire, which is proximity coupled to it. And it turns out that under the right conditions, you apply a magnetic field, you have the right kind of spin orbit coupling, uh, and the chemical potential on this wire is just right. You can get actually two zero modes at the ends of, uh, of this wire, the bulk is gapped. Uh, the, the gap basically closes only at the ends. You get these two zero modes called Majorana zero modes. And these have actually some quite striking properties. Uh, so so uh, the system is gapped, uh, but there are two uh, degenerate or nearly, nearly degenerate ground states that are distinguished by the overall fermion parity. So the number of fermions in this wire is not conserved because it's an open system. It's coupled to the superconductor, but electrons can only go in and out in pairs. So the parity of, of the number of electrons is conserved, whether it's even or odd. And it turns out that in the topological phase, these two many-body states are exactly degenerate. Okay, and uh, they're, um, it's a very robust degeneracy in this uh, system. So it's a gap system, but defects, in this case, the ends of the wire act as a defect, trap some, uh, some robust zero modes. This uh, ground state degeneracy that I mentioned between even and odd is topological, what, what, what does that mean? That basically means that it's non-local, okay? There's no way you can observe some small part of the system. You could, there's no physical observable you can measure at some uh, a small part of the system that would tell you in which one of these two states you are in. Okay, and that's what makes this uh, degeneracy so robust and so protected. Uh, uh, the only way to measure in which state you're in is basically to take a snapshot of the total system, okay? Because it's the fermion parity, the parity of number of electrons in the entire system. You sort of have to take a simultaneous snapshot of the entire system. That's, of course, difficult. So it's difficult for you. It's also difficult for the environment. If you can't tell, the environment can't tell either. So people have been intrigued by the idea to use this kind of thing as a quantum bit, okay? So it's a, it's a coherence-free, a topologically protected quantum bit. And this has been the source of much of the excitement in this field. Uh, okay, and uh, 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 more than that, so uh, if you have this kind of quantum information which is encoded in this form of protected two-level system, there's a way to manipulate that system, which is called braiding, which is also topologically protected. Okay, so not only you have the information which is protected, you can actually uh, manipulate it also in a way which is very robust to noise and to details. Okay, so this is basically the simplest example you can find of a system that has non-abelian statistics. So I'll, I'll devote just one slide to that, okay, even though probably many of you are familiar with the idea. So uh, this, is a, a, this example is for, a, imagine, a two-dimensional quantum system, many-body system, uh, even though these wires are, are, are one-dimensional and are, I'll uh, refer to that in a moment. Okay, so you have some sort of system where the ground state is gapped, but in the presence of some sort of excitations or quasi-particles, these are point-like 
particle-like excitations, the ground state is actually multiply degenerate. Okay, you can think of these as the ends of the wire from before. There's some zero mode which is trapped in these, in these uh, quasi-particles. And a, the uh, ground state is actually a subspace. It's the ground state subspace. There are several degenerate ground states. And if you move adiabatically some of these quasi-particles quasi around each other, it turns out that so uh, you're guaranteed to stay within this ground state subspace, but there's no guarantee that if you started from some state, you'll end with the same state. So this kind of exchange operation of two quasi-particles is described by a unitary matrix. So that's, that's, uh, a, a, that's the quantum statistics. But that's what happens when you, when you exchange two. This uh, is not a phase, it's a matrix. So different exchanges of different pairs of particles don't necessarily commute, and hence the, the name non-abelian statistics. Okay, this, uh, this uh, a set of braiding operations form a group because you can act in any, in any, with, with any combination that you want and you get some other unitary a, a, a operation. A, a, this is called the, uh, the, the a braid group. And the a, a remarkable thing about it is that the result of this operation doesn't actually depend on the exact way that you've done it, okay, on the, for, for instance, on the uh, exact path that these particles, these quasi-particles took. It only depends on the topology of the space-time trajectory of these particles. You can think of this diagram as uh, a being this, the space-time history, the, the xy plane is the plane, the real space plane, and the, uh, this direction is time. This is the, these are the word lines of the, of the uh, different particles. And the unitary matrix that you get by uh, acting on the ground state manifold by uh, 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 doing some series of exchanges depends only on the topology of these threads and not on the exact shape. Okay, so uh, for instance, these two diagrams here uh, describe some series of uh, 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 operations. You exchange uh, particle number one with uh, particle number two, and then two and three, and so forth. Okay, and uh, you can see that these two pictures you can slide into each other and therefore they're topologically equivalent. You don't need to, uh, to uh, uh, cut any of the threads, uh, and therefore the result is actually uh, going to be the same. Okay, they're gonna be described by the same unitary. Yes? Do I have to bring particle one phase next to the particle two one? Or what's our new, I would have to break the Right, right, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. Right, so, so uh, uh, this operation is actually only sort of well-defined if I bring particle number one exactly to where particle number two was, because then I go back to the same system, I can, I can actually say it's the same Hilbert space, I just act with the unitary, but of course I'm, ne I'm never going to make that, and that's actually not important. Okay, so, so it's not really important whether I actually do it precisely or not, What's, because uh, if I only exchange particle, num uh, 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 particle number one and particle no number two, I didn't actually measure anything. So uh, uh, there's some uh, manipulation that I did. The, the only way to extract it eventually is to bring particle number, number one and number two together and to actually measure, to lift this ground state degeneracy, and then it won't actually matter how exactly I do it. Okay, so, so, uh, right. so, so this is often a, con a confusing point about this description, but um, for a conceptually, that's the easiest way to introduce it. Okay, so, so uh, a... Uh, this is called a braid group for obvious, obvious reasons. Okay, so, so these are braids. Uh, now, for a Majorana zero modes, or a, 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 a Majorana fermions that I've described before, this is the matrix that, uh, uh, that describes the uh, exchange of two zero modes. Okay, it's a, it's a very simple matrix. It's a two by two unitary matrix. Uh, it's written in the basis of the two degenerate ground states that I've described before, the states with even or odd number of fermions. And what you get is simply a phase that depends on the parity of the number of fermions. That phase uh, is, is either one or i. Here, I've, I've actually been a little bit sloppy. I, I didn't get the overall phase right. I've just uh, uh, given the relative phase. Uh, there should be a pi over four, and there's actually another phase. But it's the, it's the relative phase here, which, is, which would be important for the purpose of this talk. So it's just a phase that depends on which state you started from in a certain basis. Uh, you can wonder what's non-abelian about this. It's a, it's a diagonal matrix. So it's, it's, it's non-abelian because it's diagonal in certain basis of the parity uh, of these two, say, Majorana zero modes. You also have uh, the parity of these two, and these two operators don't commute, so you can't diagonalize them together. Okay, for, uh, for uh, particles in a 2D plane, uh, like vortices and a chiral superconductor that were discussed earlier in this conference. Uh, this was uh, described by 
by these people. And uh, 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 more recently, people have shown that even for uh, zero modes that live on the ends of wires, which are really one-dimensional objects, it's kind of counterintuitive at first to think, how can you braid these things? This looks like an intrinsically two-dimensional operation. But it turns out that you can, uh, by a clever trick, you can sort of imagine that the system lives in a, on a certain T-junction. And uh, you can essentially go to higher dimension. And you can uh, uh, define an operation that mimics uh, this braiding and has exactly the same mathematical properties also for the zero modes that live on the ends of wires. Okay, so, so uh, I'll actually discuss a, a little bit a, a, in more detail how that's done later. Okay, so uh, these are Majorana fermions. This talk is going to be about how to go sort of beyond Majorana zero modes or Majorana fermions. Uh, so I'll describe fractionalized Majorana uh, uh, zero modes that live actually on a uh, fractional quantum hole edges. Uh, so these are sort of fractionalized, uh, uh, if you like, 1D superconductors. Uh, they can also occur more generally in a, in a in defect in a, in a two-dimensional system. Okay, so twist defects, for example, it's some sort of defect in a 2D uh, system. So that acts like a zero-dimensional uh, uh, defect, and that defect carries some sort of zero mode, which is a, a generalization of the Majorana zero mode. And uh, at the end, I'll discuss a little bit uh, uh, what happens when you introduce these kind of point-like defects in a medium which is already non-abelian. Okay, so we'll start from a 2D non-abelian phase and introduce these defects. Okay, so, so uh, can we actually get something richer than Majorana zero modes in a one-dimensional system? So uh, uh, maybe first I should say something about why uh, one would care about uh, uh, going beyond Majoranas. Majoranas are already difficult enough to realize in, in solid state systems, even though there has been some tremendous uh, uh, progress over the last years since the first ex uh, uh, experiments on this. So uh, why would one care? Uh, as, an, uh, uh, as an experimentalist, you might wonder. It's, it's already difficult. It's, uh, uh, the stakes are quite high. There's, it's quite competitive. So uh, my first answer when I was asked that at the top was, well, these are going to be much, the, the, ge the generalizations are going to be much harder to realize even from the Majoranas. So for sure, if you attempt that, it's, you're going to have much less competition. So that's one, one reason. Uh, now, uh, the other reason is that uh, uh, Majorana zero modes, as fascinating as they are, uh, they actually uh, are not enough to perform what's called universal uh, quantum computing. Okay, so it turns out that, that if you take the set of all the quantum gates or all, uh, all these unitary matrices that you can form by braiding uh, exchanging uh, Majorana zero modes, um, um, you don't get a, a enough computational power, if you like, to actually perform an arbitrary unitary matrix on, on the Hilbert space. Okay, so, so you'll have to supplement with some non-topological or non-braiding operations, and then you're back to uh, any, uh, you're like any other a, a, a qubit. So uh, there's a challenge to find a, a physical system that can host a, a, some sort of anions or some sort of um, a, a fractionalized Majorana fermions that would be actually uh, more computationally powerful or, or ha have a richer non-abelian structure that would allow for, for universal uh, quantum computation. Okay, so, so these Majoranas are living on the ends of essentially a, a quantum wire. It's a one-dimensional system, even though it's proximity coupled to a superconductor. And it's non-interacting, so, so it's kind of very inviting to think, let's take the system to be a little bit more rich, more interesting, let's add, add some interactions, and see whether we can get some a, a more interesting zero modes at the ends. Okay, so uh, uh, how about uh, other one-dimensional systems? So uh, it turns out that one-dimensional systems, even if you add interactions, can at best support Majorana zero modes. Okay, so, so there's sort of a theorem, it's, not, it's a theorem in quotes, it's not rigorous, but it's an argument that we believe is true, that gapped local Hamiltonians of either fermions or bosons, it doesn't matter, uh, can give you at best Majorana zero modes. Okay, this is in, in sort of loose words. They, they, the, um, the best non-abelian sort of object you can get at the ends is a Majorana, and nothing more. Okay, so you can get a bigger degeneracy, but it's not going to be topologically protected, for instance. Okay, so this is somehow not the right place to look. Uh, the next thing you can, you can uh, sort of imagine is let's think of a system which is effectively one-dimensional, but it's actually the edge of some higher dimensional system. Yeah. Can you say a couple of words about why? Right, so, so um, um, 
it turns out that uh, sort of you can get you, you can get topological phases in in one D, but they're always sort of uh, protected by some symmetry. There's no intrinsic topological order in one D, and uh, once you break all the other symmetries, you're not you don't really want to be protected by symmetries. The only symmetry which is left is this fermion parity, and that can support Majoranas. Okay, so so um, right, so so. Uh, uh, if you consider a system which is, a, a, which is basically the boundary of a 2D state, which, which has some topological order, which is already fractionalized, so it supports some sort of anions. Suppose it supports abelian anions, like the fractional quantum Hall state, for instance. Okay, so it's a 2D liquid of electrons, which are strongly interacting. Uh, you know that in the bulk, for instance, this might be a Laughlin state, so it supports fractionalized quasi-particles that have fractional statistics, but it's abelian, okay? So if you exchange two of these, you just get a phase, not a matrix. And the edge of the system, as you, as you know, carries some a gapless mode, some a, a gapless chiral mode in this case. It's, in this case it, it, it's, chiral just means that it moves, or it, it uh, propagates only in one, one direction. Okay, so if you look just at this edge, this kind of looks like a, some sort of quantum wire, okay? It's some sort of one-dimensional system. It's an a, emergent one-dimensional system. It's not truly one-dimensional. It's living on the boundary of uh, this non, very non-trivial a, a, a topological state. But nevertheless, at low energies, the degrees of freedom look like half the degrees of freedom of a, of a quantum wire, okay? So what happens if we try to play the same game? We, uh, a, we construct a, a, an effective quantum wire, which is made, for instance, out of two of these systems next to each other one would have a uh, chiral edge state moving to the right, and the other one would have a chiral edge state moving, moving to the left. Okay, so the, it really resembles a quantum wire, uh, but it's somewhat non-trivial. Okay, it's uh, it somewhat has a rich, a richer properties. So uh, this is, these are the kind of setups that we uh, were thinking about. This, for example, is a bilayer of uh, fractional quantum Hall states. Okay, this, these are two Laughlin states with a filling fraction of one over m. Uh, this one, say, has a spin up, and this one has a spin down. Uh, they see the same magnetic field, but suppose that you can arrange somehow that the uh, a, a, a sigma a xy of these two layers is opposite. For instance, by making one of them particles and the other one holes. Okay, this setup can actually, at least conceptually, be realized in a, in a double layer graphene system a, with, a, with a, 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 an electric field bias such that one of the layers is actually doped with particles and the other one with holes. Yes. Do you mean real spin or just some label you want to use for this? For this particular setup, it's somewhat important. It depends on details, but it, it would be somewhat important that this is real spin. It helps you because it helps you couple to the superconductor. This, this is a, an S wave superconductor. Um, but if you have, for instance, strong spin orbit coupling, you might, you might not, that might not be important. In a, in, a, in a quantum Hall system, there are actually reasons to think that you might be able to realize exactly the situation where the spins are also opposite. Okay, this, there's some evidence that at least for m equals one, for the integer case, this is actually realized. Yeah, right, there's, there's suppression of backscattering uh, because of spin conservation, essentially. Yes? <laughs> right, so uh, yeah, okay, so a, another a, a conceivable setup, as Zafir uh, suggested, is just putting them uh, next to each other, okay, not, not in a bilayer. The, the, in terms of the low energy degrees of freedom close to the edge, it's exactly the same counting. You have right, one right mover and one left mover, okay, so it's a very similar system, okay, and uh, the idea would be to proximity couple part of this wire, of this effectively one-dimensional wire, to a superconductor to allow Cooper pairs to tunnel in and out and gap it out that way, okay, so this is our fractional topological 1D superconductor, and it will also have to open a gap to, uh, a, 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 a for electrons and all the rest of this, uh, of this edge. Okay, so that will do simply by allowing backscattering of electrons between these two edges. A, okay, and that generally, if, if that backscattering or tunneling be, a, a, of electrons between the two edges is strong enough, it's gonna open a gap. A, a, okay, that's not trivial to do in a fractional quantum Hall state, as you know. Okay, there's presumably going to be some critical strength of this tunneling needed to open a gap there. A, electrons don't like to enter a fractional quantum Hall edge, okay, because it's a very strongly correlated state. And if you just, 
if you just uh, shoot an electron in at low energy, it sort of doesn't fit. It doesn't have the right correlations with the other electrons. Uh, so the matrix element is suppressed. Uh, but if the, if the tunneling is strong enough, it's essentially going to heal this droplet or these two layers into one. Okay, so, so you, you will need to exceed that. But then once you've done that, you've sort of gapped out the entire edge, but you've gapped it out in two different ways. Okay, this region or that region is gapped out by the proximity coupling to the superconductor, and the other region is gapped out by tunneling. Okay, and uh, um, this is actually very analogous to a setup which is proposed by, uh, by uh, Liang Fu and Charlie Kane, with m equals one for a bilayer or just one layer of integer quantum Hall states, they propose to essentially do the same thing, okay, in slightly different uh, uh, setting, uh, but it's equivalent, and they showed that you actually, in that case, for m equal one, you get Majorana zero modes at the ends, okay? So this was sort of the motivation uh, uh, to look for some gen generalized or fractionalized Majorana zero modes in this, in this setup. Okay, and this indeed happens. So um, the way to understand why it happens and what's the nature of the degenerate states is actually, there's a very simple argument which goes, which is exactly parallel to the argument which is made in the case of Majoranas. Okay, if you think about this superconducting region over here, that's essentially just a superconducting island which is, which is surrounded by insulators. Okay, so the charge there is, is well defined. It's not, if you just think about the region on the edge, it's not exactly conserved because it's an open system. It's coupled to the superconductor. But the parity of electrons is conserved because, again, electrons can only come in and out in pairs. Okay, so this, this is the formal way of saying it. E to the i pi q, that's just the parity of the number of electrons, plus or minus one, that commutes with the Hamiltonian of the edge. Okay, now, uh, uh, in the Majoranas, the statement is that these two states, plus and minus one, are, de are degenerate. Here, there are actually more possibilities. So we're living on the edge of this fractionalized phase. This is, a, 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 say, a Laughlin state. So we can imagine bringing a Laughlin quasi-particle from somewhere else, okay, into one of these zero modes. So we can basically change the uh, charge on the superconducting island, not just in, in, in units of uh, E, of the charge of the electron, but also in units of the charge of the Laughlin quasi-particle, one over M, say one, one third for the simplest Laughlin state. So the charge on this uh, island can be any integer divided by M, okay? It can be fractional. And therefore, you see that this operator can have more eigenvalues than just plus or minus one. In this case, it can have any, this integer n, can, it can take any value between zero and two m a minus one. And all of these a, a, a values would give you a different physical state. Okay, these are eigenvalues, different eigenvalues of, a different, of, a, of, of the same a symmetry or same uh, a unitary operator. Okay, so these would be two m distinct states which in, in the right phase, I claim, would be all degenerate. And they're all, uh, this is a topological degeneracy. Again, it cannot be uh, resolved by any local measurement. Okay, so, so uh, 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 there are two M degenerate states per superconducting region. Uh, 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 for instance, if I have an array of these superconducting regions, I can have any number of these zero modes, and the number of ground states would, would, uh, uh, would be two M uh, to the power of the number of these of these superconducting regions. Sorry, I don't understand. So yeah. In the Mariana case, you can understand it as sort of like, say, take a tie of wire. Yes. And you have these weird Mariana zero modes, but you basically think of it as there's one zero energy quasi particle mode that just happens to have this really weird wave function of two tiers and two tiers, and the Mariana is just some operator. Yes, yes, yes. right. So Right. So, so um, yeah. So it's very analogous to the case of the Majoranas. I'll talk about it a little bit later. So, for instance, there is a zero mode operator, which can take you between these different states. So, so you, what you've created here is some phase. Okay. So, so it's a gapped phase on the edge, and uh, it's gapped everywhere. But at the ends, there's some zero mode, and uh, the zero mode is is very similar to the zero mode to the Majorana zero mode. Uh, uh, other than the fact that what you can bring there at zero energy is not just an electron, it's also a Laughlin quasi-particle. Okay, so if you, there's a that's sort of... That's like a fundamental difference, because in the case of the people type P, I mean, there is a non-local quasi-particle operator that just fills or unfills that Q matrix. It's like no way of... Knowing. Of that. Right. So here, you can't... If I can't describe this just in the language of BDG, I won't tell you that there's no way you can do it. 
no, there's no way to do it. This is, this is an interacting problem. It's, a, it's important that it's living on the edge of a fractional quantum whole state, which you can't get so in a BDG language, right? Yes, okay, so, so uh, that's, that's a key property of this thing. Uh, but, but the similarity, nevertheless, is that there is this zero-mode operator. It's, I'll, I'll show you some, some more a little bit later. It kind of looks local. It looks like a local operator that you can act at the, on the end, but that's because of the sort of language I'm using. It's not really local. The operator is just the operator that injects a Laughlin quasi-particle at one of these ends. Okay, but a, 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 a moving a Laughlin quasi-particle, of course, is not a local operator. It's not a local object. It has a string sort of attached to it. Okay, so there are, in fact, zero modes. These are the non Majorana or fractionalized zero modes that carry a degeneracy, or the term, the, the technical term is quantum dimension. Their contribution to the uh, a degeneracy of the, herbis, a, of the, of the uh, a, a ground state manifold of square root of 2m. Okay, so uh, a square root of 2 would be the quantum dimension of a Majorana. Every pair of Majoranas create one two level system. So it really looks like these things are sort of a, a Majorana square root of 2 times square root of m, which is something new. Uh, and there's a precise uh, way in w which, which uh, this is actually true. Okay, and uh, it turns out that one can braid them. I'll go into that in, in, uh, in a little bit more detail later. But in a similar way that one can braid the Majoranas on the ends of wires, one can also braid these guys. And what you get is a unitary matrix that depends on the uh, fractional charge that is trapped in this superconducting island in this way. And, and this formula actually generalizes the braiding rule of Majoranas. If you take m equals 1 here, you get just the braiding rule that I showed before. Uh, there was a question? No. Right. So, so uh, uh, this braiding can be shown to satisfy the same kind of consistency equation that braiding of, of Majoranas actually uh, uh, satisfies. Uh, so this is a representation of the braid group, okay? So, so uh, but with some new, it's a new representation, different from that of Majorana's. Okay, so uh, what's the mathematical description of these kind of zero modes on the ends of the superconducting regions? So each one, the, the uh, Hilbert space is, is uh, the, the ground state Hilbert space, if you have an array of these superconducting regions, is spanned by uh, the, the, uh, the values of Q, the fractional charge, uh, so that's uh, some integer uh, divided by m, uh, uh, and it's, uh, uh, there, there are two m states per superconducting island, and now there are operators that act, physical operators that act on this low energy manifold, which are the fractionalized Marana operators. Uh, I'll denote them by chi. Physically, that corresponds to injecting a, a Laughlin quasi-particle into one of these interfaces. Okay, and uh, uh, these operators turn out to be not uh, fermions and not bosons. They have some exchange relation, okay, th these are just physical operators that act on this uh, Hilbert space, <coughs> and they satisfy this kind of algebra, this is, uh, a, this is referred to as parafermions, okay, so when you change two of them, you get a phase, which is e to the i pi divided by m, okay, so uh, when m is one, these are just fermions, uh, uh, that's the <laughs> integer case, then would th these would be the usual Majoranas, when m is bigger, say three, you get some other phase, so they're parafermions, they generalize uh, uh, regular fermions. Uh, uh, mathematically, the, the, it, the, this is the same structure as was discussed in the, constants, uh, if the, in the context of uh, statistical mechanics of a Z3, um, a, 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 a Z3 Potts model. Uh, and uh, um, Paul Findley actually discussed uh, precisely this kind of uh, a one-dimensional model where the degrees of freedom satisfy the algebra, basically the same system. He introduced it on abstract grounds, and this is a concrete realization of that, of that system. Okay, and uh, you can describe physical operators uh, as, say, terms in a Hamiltonian. When you bring two of these together, there would be some uh, non-zero Hamiltonian that acts on this uh, low-energy Hilbert space, for instance, a tunneling of an electron from one zero mode to the other through vacuum. Okay, so if, if two of these are close, electrons can tunnel. Uh, uh, the operator that, cre that creates an electron is simply that the sky operator to the power m. Okay, so uh, for instance, if m is 3, uh, um, then three Laughlin quasiparticles would form an electron that has the right charge. It also has the, the right, st uh, the right st uh, statistics you can check. Okay, so this is just uh, some, some specific operator acting on this Hilbert space. Okay, and if you let Laughlin quasi-particles tunnel through the droplet, through the interior of the a fractional quantum hole droplet, that's described by just uh, this operator, okay, chi dagger i at some 
some site or zero mode i times chi j. Okay, so uh, uh, you can actually discuss this as a as a many body a, a system. Okay, you, this is um, you can uh, discuss what happens when you have a chain of these kind of uh, Majorana zero modes, and a uh, uh, very similar to the case of Majorana's, you can have two phases, for instance, if you uh, couple them in pairs. One way, you'll get no zero mode at the end. If, if you dimerize them the other way, you'll get a zero mode, and that's just the same. A, a fractional is Majorana zero modes. You can also uh, think about 2D arrays of these things. So, uh, as you may know, if you couple a, a 2D array of Majorana zero modes, you can get the chiral superconductor. In, if you do it in the right way, if you uh, a couple an array of these zero modes, suppose you have a, drop, a, a fractional quantum hole droplet and you have an array of these uh, superconducting islands and uh, you couple them in the right way, it turns out you can, you can get a fractionalized superconductor, topological superconductor with, uh, with new properties, okay, but, I, but I won't discuss that. I discussed in this paper with many authors. Um, okay, let me just say something about the braiding. How do you actually define braiding in the system? Because these objects are not point-like particles in a 2D plane. They're actually fixed by the position of the superconductor, for instance. You can't move them freely. So uh, the, the way to, um, to think about braiding is the following. You can define sort of a discrete braiding operation that doesn't actually go on in real space. It, go on, it goes on in Hamiltonian space. So suppose I have the following kind of setup. I have a, a, an array of these superconducting islands, and I can turn on and off this kind of uh, tunneling processes between different zero modes. So this, this would be my time-dependent Hamiltonian. There's some parameters, lambda ij, which uh, uh, describe the uh, uh, tunneling of Laughlin quasi-particles between different zero modes. And uh, the braiding is gonna be just some closed loop in this parameter space, okay? So what I do is basically I start from, say, one and two coupled and all the rest decoupled, and I wanna braid three and four, okay? So there's some concrete way of doing that, what I need to do is to turn on the coupling between two and three, and then turn off the coupling between a, a one and two. That essentially pushes the zero mode that used to live in three down to one, okay? Where uh, one and two before were coupled, so they were gapped out. Now th a one and th a two and three are, are coupled, so they're gapped out, and there's one zero mode which is left. Okay, and then I can continue. I can turn on a, a coupling between two and, a, a two and four, and turn a, a two and three off, so uh, what used to live in four now lives at three. I turn one and two back on, and this one off, and uh, a one gets pushed to four. Okay, so at the end, if you follow it, uh, you can imagine that this results in, uh, in exchanging three and four. What you can do practically is just solve the Heisenberg equations of motion for these operators, and you see that they actually exchange. Okay, so uh, a, the, uh, a, a, a Debatic evolution operator that corresponds to this time-dependent Hamiltonian is just the braiding. So it's a closed path in Hamiltonian space. And it turns out that just like braiding, there's a lot of freedom in how to actually make this path, and the result would actually be the same. The, the result depends only on topology in this parameter space and not on the exact a, a, a form of the path. Okay, and uh, this is the, the result that you get. Yeah. How do you actually do that? You, yeah. So, so you, you could still do it. Okay. It's some operator. You just follow its evolution. It's an it's a complicated equation. It's kind of uh, it's not it's not closed, uh, but you can still write it. The 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 uh, more practical maybe way to do it is just to solve the Heisenberg equation uh, of motion on the states, not on the operators. Okay, it's not the Heisenberg equation, it's the Schrodinger equation, right? So, so uh, this is an operator that acts in the, on, the, on the Hilbert space, right? Okay, so, so uh, um, right, so, so uh, um, uh, this is the same braiding rule that I've, I've shown, so this is how it's derived. Okay, but, but this way of thinking about braiding sort of is, is generalizable to any type of topological zero mode, okay? All you need to do is uh, to define some zero mode operator that acts on the... Uh, a, a topologically degenerate Hilbert space, and then you can do braiding, and you can study what, how, how do these zero modes braid. Okay, so a, a, how much time do I have? Uh, five, minutes. five minutes. Okay, so, so a, there are a, a couple of um, more recent uh, extensions that I'd like to describe very briefly, uh, and, and then I'll conclude. Okay, so, so um, first of all, a, these kind of uh, fractionalized Majoranas 
require coupling superconductors to fractionalized a quantum Hall states, which is intrinsically difficult. Okay, so a fractional quantum Hall state requires a high, high magnetic fields, and superconductors don't like that. It turns out that there's a way to realize these uh, a fractionalized Majoranas even with, with, uh, without superconductors. Okay, so this was an, an, a nice paper by, by these people, a series of papers. So a, imagine you have a bilayer of uh, one-third Laughlin states, so, and you basically cut a trench in this, in this bilayer. So this, it's, it's just a, a bilayer of, uh, of uh, a fractional quantum Hall states with filling fraction one-third. You cut this trench, you expose basically four edge states, okay, two, two uh, a left movers on this edge and two right movers on that edge. Now you can, uh, you can sort of uh, think about the edge degrees of freedom schematically like this. Now you can heal the edge back by letting, letting electrons tunnel between different edges, but you see that there are two distinct ways of doing that. So you can either couple uh, this pair of uh, a, a counter-propagating modes strongly in this pair. That would heal just the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom, but you can also do it in a sort of zigzag way. You can do it like this. Okay, this is again a pair of counter-propagators this one and that one, and then this one and that one. Okay, that's another way of opening a gap, healing back the edge, but these are two distinct ways, and they're I I incompatible with each other, and it turns out that at the boundary between these two types of regions, of gap regions A and B, you get a zero mode, which has mathematically the same structure as the fractionalized Majorana zero mode I was discussing before. Okay, there's um, a several ways to understand that. Uh, uh, okay, what happens in this region is that a, a quasi-particles can, can propagate coherently through this uh, healed edge within the same layer, whereas in this, in this region, what happens is that if you, uh, if you shoot the quasi-particle uh, from, uh, from the top layer, it would actually uh, sort of tunnel through the bottom layer and, and propagate coherently there. Okay, you've uh, uh, essentially stitched this top bottom layer with the top layer on the other side. Okay, so this is a twist defect. This is essentially a defect in this bilayer system. Um, and a, a, you have a zero mode, which, is a, which a essentially can absorb a quasi-particle, quasi-whole pair right at this uh, point, at the boundary between these two phases. That's the zero mode here. Okay, now there's a sort of neat way to understand where the uh, degeneracy is coming from. You just rotate a, the bottom system around this axis. Uh, you get a system which is like this. Okay, here you uh, stitch top to top and bottom to bottom, and here you stitch top to top on the same side and, and top to bottom on the same side. If you think about it, this system is just a hygienist surface. Okay, it's just a torus. And you know that the torus uh, a, a with a fractional quantum Hall state has a ground state degeneracy which, top, which is topological. Okay, so, so uh, a, the, the bottom line is that these fractionalized Majorana a, a zero modes can exist even with systems with no superconductors. Okay, so uh, these are power fermions without super, super connectivity that may make them easier to realize. Okay, but uh, uh, just at the end, let me say a couple words about anionic def defects in non-abelian systems. So it turns out that um, even though these uh, a fractionalized Majorana fermions enrich the properties of Majoranas, just in the sense that they, they're different, okay, there's a bigger ground state degeneracy, um, a, it's a higher dimensional uh, representation of the braid group. Nevertheless, they're still not universal for quantum computation. Okay? The set of uh, unitaries you can form by braiding these is still limited. It's still a finite set. It's not covering the entire Hilbert space. So that's a, that's a motivation to go further, to ask, well, what's the, si what's the simplest ingredient we need uh, to get a zero mode that has universal uh, uh, properties? So uh, uh, the lesson maybe from this uh, fractionalized Majorana exercise is that what these defects do is that they enrich the non-abelian properties of the host phase. Okay, for, for instance, in the Laughlin case, what we can do is take a fractionalized phase but with abelian anions, introduce defects, and they, have, they act as non-abelian non things. Okay, so what happened if we introduce uh, these kind of defects in a system which is itself non-abelian? Okay, can we enrich the properties of the host phase to make it, say, from non-universal to universal. Because we do have some candidate, at least, two-dimensional non-abelian systems, like the, the, the Mourid state, filling fraction five halves, but it's still non-universal. Non so maybe these defects can actually enrich it and make it universal. Okay, so that's something we're working on now. Um, uh, 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 okay, so uh, uh, what happens when we, uh, what are the properties of defects in a non-abelian system? Can they enrich the system? 
uh, and uh, we took this, this sort of simplest example you can find, which is, which is Isingen Jans, basically a 2D system that supports a, 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 a quasi-particles that have Majorana zero modes on them. A, the uh, properties of, these, uh, of this kind of, this kind of uh, a system are, are quite simple. There are three types of particles, the vacuum, the fermion, or the uh, BDG quasi-particle, if you like, and a sigma, which is like a vortex. A, this is essentially the uh, non-abelian statistics of the P plus IP chiral superconductor. And there are fusion rules, if you... Uh, that tell you what happens when, when you f what happens when you fuse two of these quasi particles, for instance, two uh, fermions fuse into the, uh, into a boson the, the, that is the the, uh, the vacuum. Two Majoranas can fuse into one or a, or a fermion. Okay, and then there are some extra rules that tells you what happens when you exchange two of these. Uh, this is a so-called R matrix. You get some phase that depends on the fusion rule of the two particles. Okay, and then we're, we're going to play the same game. We're, go we're going to uh, take a bilayer of these Ising systems, say a bilayer of Moritz states, and we're going to introduce a twist defect in the same way that uh, a Perkeshli company introduced for the uh, um, uh, for Laughlin states. Okay, so, so uh, um, uh, you can uh, find the zero mode operator. There still is some new zero mode which is locked on this defect. And you can find its properties. You can, you, there, there, there is going to be a high a ground state degeneracy a, 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 of the system when you introduce these defects, kind of for the same reason that it, it, it happened for the Laughlin state. Okay, this is essentially like putting the system on a high genus a, a torus. Here, the ground state degeneracy turns out to be a, actually two per defect. So the a quantum dimension of these defects is two. And a, there's some new type of zero mode, which is basically a a particle whore, it's a sigma-sigma bar, a, a pair in the two layers that can be absorbed coherently in this defect, just like in the, in the Laughlin case. Okay, so I, I won't go into the details here. There are some operators that describe the tunneling of, uh, of uh, quasi-particles between these zero modes. You can think about these zero modes literally as sort of holes in a, in a fat torus. Okay, this is a high genus torus. Uh, the genus just depends on the number of defects that you introduce. And the physical operators are now tunneling of uh, sigma quasi-particles that can occur if you bring two of these holes close together. Okay, and uh, these operators uh, uh, satisfy some generalization of the parafermion algebra. The uh, 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 parafermions, which were the zero modes in the Laughlin case, just when you exchange them, gave you some phase. Here it turns out that to uh, characterize the algebra of these guys, you need at least three of these and not two. There's no exchange. It turns out that the... the uh, um, uh, tunneling operators here are non-unitary, and the, when you change them, you just get zero. Uh, there's some reason for that I won't go into, but uh, there's kind of a relation between three tunneling uh, uh, operators that you need to characterize uh, the operation of these tunneling operators on the ground state manifold. Okay, with the lack of a better name, we call this a tri-algebra. These are three operators that tunnel, say, a, 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 a pairs of uh, quasi-particles from two to four, from two to three, and from three to four. Okay, and they have to satisfy this kind of consistency relation between them. Now, uh, knowing this algebra, you can actually construct these operators explicitly on a finite Hilbert space, and you can find the braiding, this kind of discrete braiding protocol exactly following the same protocol as before. Okay, and uh, this is what you find. Okay, I've, I didn't actually describe the degrees of freedom here, but it doesn't really matter. There's some unitary matrix that describes braiding of these two. The important thing is that you get this phase of pi over four, and it turns out that this is just the right phase you need to uh, make the host, um, the, uh, the uh, a, a host a Ising phase to be universal. Okay? I mean, uh, there's actually one missing gate, a quantum gate, that you need to make a system of Ising anions universal. That's the so-called pi over 8 gate. And this uh, gate of, of uh, pi over 4 is exactly the, the gate that you need. So the claim is that this kind of system, a bilayer of Ising, a, a, a anion systems a, with defects is actually going to be universal. Okay, that, that's been a, a anticipated by a Berkeley and all sort of on general grounds, and this is an explicit calculation that actually shows that. Um, a, okay, so so this is the pi over eight gate. A, 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 it turns out that a, a, a more physical, sort of more physical, a accessible, physically ac a accessible realization of this would be a bilayer of uh, five half systems. A, a, a five half quantum hole systems. There's some consp a, a conspiracy of numbers, and there it's not universal. 
Uh, so uh, we're still thinking, at least conceptually, about what kind of system can actually realize this. Uh, okay, this would be like a bilayer of uh, Kitaev honeycomb models. But uh, more, more generally, the message is that uh, uh, defects can enrich the non-abelian properties of some host phase. So uh, they, uh, they can, um, um, they can uh, uh, sort of give us a richer uh, toolkit to the non-abelian uh, 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 non systems we can access given some, uh, say, quantum, uh, set of uh, quantum host states. And I hope this, there would be some realization of this in the relatively near future. Okay, so with that, let me thank you for your attention.